The wind wasn't just cold. It was alive screaming through the night, tearing at wood and skin alike. Somewhere in that white silence, a Viking sat curled beside a dying ember, his breath turning to ice before it touched the ground. No gas, no power, just the sound of the storm and the slow heartbeat of a man refusing to freeze. When the cold became unbearable, when even fur and fire failed, they turned to something almost unthinkable. They rubbed animal fat and ash straight onto their skin, thick, heavy, greasy, but it worked. The fat sealed the warmth and kept the wind from slicing into flesh and trapped a thin layer of living air right against the body. A primitive shield, raw, crude, yet perfect. Think of it as the first survival skincare, not a luxury cream from a glowing bottle, but the difference between life and death when the world outside hit minus 71 degrees Celsius. How did they survive that blizzard? And how could you if the power went out tonight? The blizzard rolled over Scandinavia like a white tide. The roofs bent under frozen grass creaking in the wind. Inside walls hissed as snow seeped through every crack. The fire gasped once, then died, and the cold came in like a living thing. But the Vikings, they didn't panic. They knew something, something we've forgotten. They lowered their floors, not by accident, but by instinct. Beneath every longhouse, they carved a shallow pit half a meter deep, lined it with reindeer hide and dry moss. That's where the family slept, not above the cold air, but below it, where heat gathers and lingers. Each entrance had two doors, one outside, one in creating a natural airlock. No drafts, no wasted warmth. Every movement inside that house was calculated like a heartbeat, keeping the heat trapped low, close to the skin. You can build the same thing today, in a cabin, in a shelter. Dig a small pit line it with wool or straw seal your doors tight. That's not nostalgia, it's physics. By lowering your floor just a little, you can save up to 70-80% of your heat on a stormy night, even with no power, no gas, no generator humming in the dark. The wind screamed, the walls groaned, the fire was gone. But under that floor pit, the family slept warm. It wasn't luck, it was design, and it still works. The night was long, too long. The fire had burned low, and every stick of pine was gone. Outside, the wind clawed at the walls, a hollow roar, hungry and endless. Inside, darkness pulsed red one ember at a time. The Vikings knew that if the flame died completely, so would they. But they also knew how to cheat the cold quietly, patiently. They dug a pit beneath the hearth, a small hollow no bigger than a man's chest. They filled it with river stones, smooth and heavy, then buried glowing coals beneath. The stones absorbed the heat, held it, breathed it out slowly through the night. Above it, the floor stayed warm, steady as a heartbeat. No roaring flames, no smoke, just quiet, invisible warmth rising from the ground. You can still do this right where you are. Dig a shallow hole 30 or 40 centimeters deep, line it with stones or brick, drop in a bed of embers, cover it with heavier rocks, then seal it with packed earth or a cast iron lid. Keep a thumb wide vent for fresh air, never trap smoke. Low oxygen and CO can be deadly. That's your ember chamber, a natural mass heater that hums for six, maybe eight hours. Without gas, without power, without a single spark left in sight. It's not ancient magic, it's design. Physics turned human. So when the next storm comes, when the firewood runs out and the wind screams at 40 below, even 71 below, remember this. The warmth doesn't have to come from the flame. Sometimes it rises from the earth itself. There was no glass, no wool insulation, just hide and fur between a man and the blizzard. The Vikings didn't need luxury, they needed life, and nature gave them the perfect blueprint. Reindeer hide, it wasn't just warm, it was engineered by survival itself. Each hollow hair trapped air inside, forming thousands of tiny pockets, a living barrier against the cold. Measured today, that layer is estimated to reach an R value of six sometimes seven, almost the same as modern insulation foam. A thousand years ago, 
they'd already solved it. They wore two layers, one close to the skin, short fur turned inward, the outer long hairs facing the storm. Between them, they stuffed dried grass or softer pelts, building a second skin full of air. And air is the most loyal protector of heat. You can still use that wisdom in a cabin, in a tent, out in the wild. Recreate it with a wool blanket and a reflective tarp. Trap the air between layers that's your invisible armor. It's not fancy, it's physics. And it works 30 to 40% more warmth without burning a single log. The wind can howl, the frost can bite, but your body will start to hum again, generating warmth from within. Because that's the secret the ancients knew heat doesn't have to come from fire. It can come from the way you hold it. They didn't survive by comfort, they survived by design. And that is warmth turned human. Their houses had no chimneys, just a hole in the roof and smoke that moved like breath. To us, it would seem unbearable. The air thicked the beams black and every breath blending into the mist that lived above their heads. But to the Vikings, that haze was warmth. A shield made not from wood or stone, but from air smoke and patience. That smoke didn't just linger, it worked. It formed what they called the smoke blanket, a soft living layer that trapped radiant heat beneath the rafters, slowing its escape into the frozen sky. The physics are simple, but the wisdom behind it runs deep. They burned small fires, slow fires, fires that breathed instead of roared. No need for tall flames licking at the roof, just embers steady and low, feeding a rhythm of warmth through the house. The smoke drifted upward, gathering under the roof at about seven feet high, thick enough to hold heat, thin enough to breathe beneath. And near the top, they left a small vent, never wide open, never sealed, just enough to let the smoke exhale gently, conserving warmth without trapping fumes. Below that smoky veil, life continued. They cooked, they mended nets, they told stories, Children slept beneath walls that stayed warm for hours longer. Even insects, frost, and wind dared not pierce that invisible shield. This wasn't primitive, it was deliberate. A living equilibrium between fire and air chaos and control. The modern world calls it radiant efficiency. They simply called it night. And you can still use their secret today. In a cabin, in a yurt, even in a blackout. Keep your vents small. Let the heat linger high. Every bit of trapped air is another hour of survival and a few fewer logs to burn. Outside the storm screamed. Inside the smoke curled slow and heavy, glowing in the firelight, alive like breath. And beneath that cloud, they slept warm. Not because they had power, but because they had design. When the fire died, they didn't sleep alone. They moved closer, shoulder to shoulder, heartbeat to heartbeat, because warmth wasn't just fire, it was people. In those long houses, six bodies pressed together became a living furnace. 500, maybe 600 watts of pure biological heat, steady, silent human. It wasn't romance, it was survival. They laid reindeer hides on the ground, thick and soft, stopping the cold from creeping up through the floor. The weakest, the old, the children, were always placed in the center, wrapped tight in the pulse of the group. No one froze alone. No one was left outside the circle. You can still do this. In a cabin. In a blackout. Push your beds together. Share the same blanket. That small act can save half the heat your stove would burn through the night. But more than that, it keeps the mind alive. It tells your body you're not fighting this storm by yourself. Every person gives off heat like a candle under a single breath. Put six of them together and suddenly the dark feels smaller, the night more forgiving. This isn't primitive, it's primal. It's what the human body was built for shared survival. So when the lights go out, when the house goes silent and the wind claws at your door, remember this, your warmth isn't in the fire, it's in the people beside you. The Vikings knew that. They didn't fear the cold. They feared being alone. The fire burned low. The air outside sharp as glass. But inside something else was burning. Deeper. 
The Vikings didn't just heat their homes, they heated their blood. They understood that warmth begins from within. Their diet was simple, brutal, and perfect. Fat from fish, meat from reindeer, bone broth with a shimmering layer of grease floating on top. Each sip fed the body like fuel into a furnace. The fat burned slow the warmth lasting through the endless night. When the storms came, they didn't just light a fire, they became one. Their bodies hummed with energy, their breath fogging like steam off a living forge. You can do the same even off-grid, even in blackout. Make a winter broth water, bone, salt, and fat. Drink it slow, sip by sip each hour. Or mix oil, honey, and salt, a modern blend that keeps your inner fire burning twice as long. That's not just nutrition, it's thermal engineering inside the body. Every calorie you take in becomes a spark. Every heartbeat, a pump that moves heat, where no fire can reach. Out there, when the world freezes solid and your woodpile runs low, you'll find the oldest truth of all, you don't always need to burn more wood, you just need to burn stronger inside. The Vikings knew that. They didn't eat for pleasure, they ate for flame. When the wind drops to minus 71 Celsius, there's no sound left. Only the scream of air carving through flesh and bone in that kind of cold running is an escape, it's suicide. So they stopped. And instead of fleeing the storm, they entered it. The Vikings and the Arctic tribes that came after understood a strange truth. Snow, the very symbol of death, can save your life. Beneath that white fury lies a calm pocket where physics becomes mercy. Because snow is not solid, it's air trapped in frozen form. And air, when still, is the oldest blanket known to man. They searched for deep drifts where the wind couldn't cut. Their hands, red and stiff, carved small domes barely tall enough to sit and round like the inside of a skull. One narrow tunnel facing away from the wind was their only door. Inside they lined the floor with dry grass, moss, or pine needles, anything to separate skin from frost. They poked a small vent above head height and carved a drip shelf near the entrance air must breathe. Melt must not fall on sleepers. And then, they waited. At first it was bitter, every breath turned to mist, every movement stiff and slow. But within an hour, the air inside began to soften. The snow walls trapped the heat from their bodies, holding it like a living lung. The cave breathed with them, exhaling warmth, inhaling silence. Outside the storm roared like an angry god. Inside you could hear a heartbeat, yours. That's not magic, that's physics. Inside a snow cave, the temperature stays near around zero degrees, while outside it's minus 71 degrees. A difference wide enough to decide between frostbite and dawn. You can still use this today. Lose your shelter, lose your fire, you can still make life from snow. Find a drift, dig small, stay low. The snow will protect you if you respect it. Think of it as nature's thermos designed long before man built walls. This isn't recklessness, it's design older than language, because sometimes survival isn't about fighting nature, it's about understanding it. The Vikings knew that. They didn't fear the storm, they listened to it, and they learned that even in the coldest night on earth, warmth can still be carved from snow. The storm is gone now, what's left is silence, thick, heavy, sacred. They had no generators, no rescue. No power but their own design, just knowledge and trust in the cold. For the Vikings, warmth wasn't luck, it was architecture. Every wall, every fur, every ember had meaning. They didn't fight nature, they followed it. And in that obedience, they endured what most men today could not. Now imagine this your home dark after the power fails. No hum, no heat, just your breath and the wind outside. That's when you'll understand comfort was never guaranteed. Only wisdom kept people alive. Maybe survival isn't about strength. It's about remembering how to work with the storm. To let design breathe warmth. Even when fire dies, the fire breathes its last, a soft orange heartbeat fading into the snow. And the voice, almost a whisper, they trusted the cold. And the cold kept them alive.